Hi, I'm Professor Clements, and today we're going to talk about a problem where we're going to be titrating a weak acid with a strong base, and we're doing it before the equivalence point. Now, we'll talk about what that means, but in case you're looking this up somewhere. We're doing it before the equivalence point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some 0.2 molar hydrofluoric acid, I should say, and 25 milliliters of it, and we're going to titrate it with 0.4 molar, 0.4 molar sodium hydroxide. I'm having a tough time talking, apparently. And <coughs> what we're asking for is what's the pH of the solution after we've added 10 milliliters of 0.4 molar sodium hydroxide. So whenever we're doing titration problems, there's a few things going on. One, there's several different regions of the titration curve that we can be in. So if I draw a generic titration curve here, which is pH versus volume of base added in the corner, what happens is the pH goes up a little bit, it stays steady, and we get that really big curve here. And these different parts of the curves have different things. This region here, which we call before the equivalence point, is a buffer region. There's a region over here, which is at the equivalence point. It's actually a point, not a region. And then there's a region over here, which is called after the equivalence point. Now, since all those names, regions are named after the equivalence point, one of the things I like to do when I'm doing titration problems is I first like to find the equivalence point. What is the point at which I'm going to be at the middle of this graph? Because that tells me what kind of problem I'm going to be solving. In a previous problem, we solved the pH at the initial before we started the titration, and that was just a weak acid problem. And so today, we're going to be solving it when we've added 10 milliliters. So like I said, the first thing we need to know is what's the equivalence point? So the equivalence point, most people think about it, is when the acid is equal to the base. And that's not quite correct, because for diprotics and triprotics, or dibasic and tribasic ones, it's not going to be one-to-one -one ratios. There's going to be some stoichiometry involved. So how I normally think of the equivalence point is when the moles of H plus is equal to the moles of OH minus. Now, how do we calculate moles in solutions? Well, moles is equal to volume times molarity. So volume of H plus times the molarity of H plus is going to be the volume of OH minus times the molarity of OH minus. Now, <coughs> that works in general for things. In this case, I have, I know, a monoprotic acid and a monoprotic monobasic base. And so I can actually put that my H plus is the same thing as my acid, and my OH minus is the same thing as my base. If I had diprotics or triprotics, it wouldn't work quite the same way. But in this case, it's pretty simple. So here, I'm actually going to change this to the volume of acid times the molarity of the acid is the volume of the base times the molarity of the base to find the equivalence point, which is how much base am I going to be adding in order to neutralize all of my acid. So I put in data from the problem here. I've got that 25.0 milliliters of acid, and it's 0 0.200 molar is the volume of the base times the molarity of the base, which is 0.4 molar. And I find, when I do the math, that I need 12.5 milliliters of base to reach the equivalence point. And if you look at our problem statement way up top here, I've only added 10 milliliters of base, which means I'm before the equivalence point. So that is one of the special regions of the graph. We'll have some other videos on at the equivalence point and after the equivalence point. But here we are. So we know we are before the equivalence point. And that's going to be very important. Okay. So what do we do when we're before the equivalence point? Well, let's think about the reaction we're doing. We are taking some formic acid, HCHO2. We are adding hydroxide, right? We're adding sodium hydroxide, but it's soluble, so it's really the hydroxide that's doing it. And there is an equilibrium reaction between it, but you know what? It's so strong, it's going to really drive just to the right. So I'm just going to draw a right arrow there. And what we're going to make is the formate ion and some water. Now to be good, I need to put my phases on there. So I'm going to put all of them there. And there we go. Our formic acid is reacting with the hydroxide to make the formate ion as well as water. So since we're before the equivalence point, what that means is we have not added as much OH minus as we have of the acid. We have more of the acid than we have of the OH minus. So that means even when this reaction runs completely, OH minus is our limiting reactant, which means we will be making some of this at equilibrium, not equilibrium, after the reaction. And there will still be some of this present. 
So what do we have? We have a solution that contains some acid and some of its conjugate. Well, that's the definition of a buffer. And so we're going to be able to solve this problem using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation because we know we have a buffer present. So let's figure out how much of each we have. Well, if we know OH is going to be the limiting reactant in the problem, we're going to react 100% of the OH. We're going to use up as much acid in terms of moles as we had OH. Now, one of the things that happens in a titration is we're adding volume, we're adding volume, so volume is constantly changing, which means concentration is constantly changing, and that's hard to keep track of. And what it turns out is we can also keep track of things instead of in concentration, we can keep track of it in moles. And more often than not in titrations, we keep track of it in millimoles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate my starting acid and base millimoles. Okay, and that's just going to be volume times molarity, but we're just going to keep the volume in milliliters. And so for our acid, we had 25.0 milliliters times 0 0.200 molar, and that's 5.00 millimoles. So we have 5 millimoles of acid. Our strong base, the sodium hydroxide, we had 10.0 milliliters times 0 0.4 molar, and so we have 4.0 millimoles of our strong base. And we said OH is the limiting reactant, so we're going to react 100% of that. And what we're going to have left of the acid is 5 minus 4. Right? We're using up 4 millimoles of acid to react with the base, and so we have 1.0 millimoles left. And for the base, Right? We're using up all of that. We said that was our limiting reactant. So we have zero millimoles. And specifically, I'm talking about the OH minus when I talk about the base. And then our conjugate. Right? Whenever we react the acid and the base, we are making our formate ion conjugate. That's this one up here. So we're making that as we go along. We've got to keep track of how much we're making. And stoichiometrically, if we used up 4 millimoles of OH minus, then we made 4 millimoles of our conjugate, since the stoichiometry is just 1 to 1. So now, if you remember the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, it's pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of your base over the concentration of your acid. Now what's nice about the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is because we have a ratio of concentrations there, it turns out, and I'm not going to prove it here, but you can also use a ratio of moles as well, because when you convert moles to molarity, you divide by the volume, and that cancels out in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my millimoles. So I get pKa plus the log of my millimoles of base, and remember my base now is talking about my conjugate. So that's going to be 4.00 millimoles and 1.00 millimoles down here. My units will cancel, which is good because you can't take the log of units. Now I got to figure out what the pKa is. And remember, pKa, we're just going to take the negative log of the Ka. And so if you plug that in, you get 3.74 because the Ka of the formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. You just look that up in a table. Okay, so we are finally ready to calculate the pH is 3.74 plus the log of 4.00 over 1.00. You plug that in your calculator and you find that the pH has gone up to 4.34. And that is the pH of a 0.2 molar formic acid solution, 25 milliliters, after you've titrated with 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. I uh, hope that video has been helpful for you figuring out these titration problems. We'll look forward in the next videos to doing one at the equivalence point and one after the equivalence point. Thanks.